The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Hi! Howdy howdy hoo, Wolfpack! Catastrophe here, but you don't care. Nobody does, because you've all forgotten me. I've been sealed away for weeks on end, and nary a soul has noticed. Since I lost your attention and can't win it back, what am I, huh? Some kind of a circus cat? Is that it? Is that it? Some kind of a circus cat? Maybe I should be wearing a funny little hat. You like it? See the dancing cat. Pay five bucks to see the dancing cat. Only five bucks to see the dancing cat. That turn you on? Ah! Welp, I'm bored with insanity. Guess I'll get back to Crypt TV. After spending so much time using the franchise as a litter box, I'd figure it's time we get back into some golden jewels again. And what better choice but none other than one of the Cryptverse's most popular horror icons, Soot. <laughs> This monster is among the noteworthy titles for the web series, and easily an utterly horrifying ghoul which haunts our nightmares. This isn't simply another monster of the week or D-list amateur OC. This guy is a heavy hitter, and one of the leading mascots for Crypt TV's horror universe. Soot's right up there next to the Birch and Looksy in terms of popularity, and continues on as a vital creature in their grim wonderland, even popping up or making cameos in other tales of suspense. What makes this old man so special? Well, you're about to find out. FYI, we're covering the supercut of Soot's first season, in order to gain an in-depth experience with our main man. Basically, we have three parts, Canary, Current, and Flood. So, cover any scars and ensure your safety, because we're going on a date with death. This is Cat's long anticipated wacky riff view on the beloved cryptid saga, Soot. <laughs> So, our first chapter opens up with a cave in. A minor 49er gets hurt, but he's okay as he returns home after some medical treatment and has enough time to chill with plot convenience news. Rescue crews are working tirelessly to find any remaining survivors. Three bodies have been recovered from the rubble, and miraculously, one miner has been rescued without any serious injuries. There was a rock slide at Miner 49ers work today, and although he survived, he suffers both mental and physical scars, pondering how he still lives until it happens. He forgot the secret sauce? No. He didn't wash his hands? No. Irregular portions? No! Apparently, Silent Hill visits as the miner's pad shifts into a haunted nether realm. He wanders around the house as it slowly turns into almost a dark cave, crumbling all around him, with something dark lurking inside. <laughs> Hello! It's here where we meet tonight's Nightmare Fuel Station attendant, Soot. As we learn about his M.O. and the plot twist, Soot is actually the Grim Reaper. At least Crypt TV's take on him. Our monster is a savage, twisted ghoul who collects souls, and if his divine work is ever interrupted, then he personally hunts down people who escaped death's grasp in order to finish the job. Yep, Minor 49er and all the victims we follow are souls who weren't supposed to live, as death intended them to die for planned accidents, but they failed to suffer their real fatal demise. So Mr. Reaper tracks them down and slaughters them himself. 
If this sounds a tad familiar, that's because Soot is clearly inspired by the Final Destination series. For those who don't know, Final Destination is about tragedy victims who were also destined to die by freak accidents, only to unintentionally survive said accidents, where divine intervention itself comes for them and slays them in ironic over-the-top deaths to rectify the mistake, with death itself being played up as a vague antagonist, disguised as nature itself. Or maybe it's Tony Todd. The Crypt TV saga sort of plays tribute to that epic horror franchise by playing the stories in a similar fashion. Sympathetic survivors haunted both metaphorically and literally, but goes a lot farther with it because their take actually has Death himself stepping in as a full-blown slasher killer causing the ironic death accidents with his own claws, which does make him feel like a character you don't want to face off with. Soot is simply the angel of death, and has come to fix his mistakes of letting these souls slip through the cracks. I'll see you soon. I'll admit, I love the design for their Reaper. Soot has a supernatural Del Toro design, which makes the spirit resemble a twisted fairy tale creature. And you can never fully tell if he's more of a corrupted human or just a plain shadow being. The creature stood well over six feet, holes where his eyes should be, his gums revealing rotten teeth over the pitch of black skin and bones jutting haphazard from his skull and body. Even though he had no eyes, I knew he could see me. Though, I do think the weird bone sticking out of his head is a bit silly. His bone hair is really meant to represent a sick crown, showing us how he's literally the king of the dead. Which, while a cool idea, only makes me think Soot just got his hair done at the salon. I told you. What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Cause I told you. Mm -hmm. It just makes me laugh for a sec, but don't worry. He'll remind us all that he's anything but funny. The movie not only grants their Grim Reaper a rad design and magical MO, but also boosts his skills with some spooky atmosphere. Sphere. Soot doesn't just jump scare on the scene, his presence is felt by the targets. The room grows eerie, and unnatural magic haunts the lost souls before Soot fully reveals himself. It's like death is literally and metaphorically looming over the characters before he strikes. This is a force of nature. Back to our plot, even the minor 49er starts to feel cold before Soot promptly toys with him. Whew, nothing here. And if the design doesn't get you, then the gross, gory violence will. And we finally learn that the Reaper upholds a strict style as to how he reaps. Death kills the miner in the exact way he was meant to die back in the cave-in, brutalizing and crippling the body before ending him. Or possibly raping him. <laughs> Tonight, you. That's totally not a scene you can take out of context. The Miner's death shows that Soot doesn't aim for basic kills, but in his point of view, a divine karma. The monster recreates the way the survivors were supposed to die as a way to ensure their intended death works this time. It's honestly a super cool gimmick, since it does make you ponder if Soot truly is a villain, or sees his murders as a genuine divine intervention that needs to be done. It lets us know that Soot seemingly doesn't align with good or evil, but is a force of nature whose will must be complete. Soot's not a noble spirit like the Birch, and not an evil demon like Mordio, but a merciless neutral who only does his work because it has to be. The world needs fate. <sighs> I knew this would take so long, I'd have put on a TV. Pizza! 
Your money's on the counter. No tip. Are you miserable bastard? That's why I'm up here. Death claims his first soul on screen, and if you know Grimm, his work is never truly over. Oh, what did I ever do to deserve a wife as good as me? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Chapter 2 is very much Final Destination inspired, as the show pays homage to the first ever death in that franchise by having a bathroom accident. We now follow a downer cynical chick who has a nasty fight with her boyfriend before she accidentally dies of both head trauma and drowning in her own tub. This is basically a reference to Todd's bathroom death but only taken even farther by doing it twice. We see her boyfriend saves her just in time and gets her healed, where she repays him by being a bitch. Women. While resting, she sees that she has a crescent moon scar just like our minor 49er, meaning soot befalls her as well. The second chapter clarifies how soot uses these scars to track his victims, as the crescent-shaped wound is an omen that they have not fulfilled their demise, and are used as a way for soot to identify that they are not yet gone, acting as the mark of death. The black spot! Once Soot completes his kill, the scar fully forms into a whole circle as a sign that his mission succeeds. Since our blonde gal has this spot, it allows Soot to spot her. Again, this scene really loves referencing Final Destination, as we see the Reaper toying with her before finishing the job by brutalizing her with head trauma and drowning her, ensuring she dies this time. The film is slightly upgraded from the Canary as Soot is shown in full light so we can enjoy the design work and watch super cool scares. But I won't lie, it also kind of makes the short real silly, as the way freaking Death struggles to get a frightened prissy woman is hilarious. She actually tries hiding from a monster in her bathroom, where Soot somehow can't enter. <laughs> Open up, or I'll hit you with this blunt instrument I used to hit deadbeats with bad credit cards. Well, it's, it's not an instrument, it's more of an object. But it's blunt, hard and blunt, and well, it's kind of like a bat. I found it out back one day when I was raking. And even funnier, the god-level divine being of the inevitable just beats her up. <laughs> The angel of death boils and ghouls, but of course she gains her full moon scar and falls. Death scratches another mark. As fun as Soot's killing spree is, we don't get too much knowledge on his persona underneath the skull until the finale. We see that our final victim is a teen who got electrocuted. However, Crypt TV spices up the formula by having our real protagonist as a pair of outside eyes, stumbling across a death game. We meet our real main character, the dead teen's mom, arriving home too late, as she enters a dark soot storm. And to be fair, the creepy atmosphere is back, as soot is just as creepy hiding in the shadows. Now that's some prime nightmare meat. This time, Soot takes a more ominous approach in order to allow the atmosphere to make his eventual strike hit harder. Mom finds her daughter Rachel scared out of her wits and hiding in the dark, warning her that Soot's home, so Mom does her best to cheat death and save her baby. We get another intense escape scene as Soot knows where they are, but they try to outmaneuver, only discovering the monster is the shadows. <sighs> he ropes in Rachel, where Mom learns that even a parent's love can't defy nature. Double kill.
It's super brief, but I love that effect. The mom can't stab Death, resulting in her killing herself, showing how Death can't be harmed, but it can harm you. A very trippy godlike ability. In a last-ditch effort, Mom kills herself in order to exchange her own life for Rachel's. But Soot proves himself to be a true cold-blooded neutral by taking both their lives anyway, ending his show on a big shocker. <laughs> The grand finale shows us that Soot is not capable of picking sides or showing mercy. As his will must be done, death is unforgiving and eventually has to happen, making him one merciless monster. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop until you are dead. Anywho, that's the end of the original trilogy of Crypt TV's Angry Angel, Soot. And it's an electrifying exploration of the inevitable end. The Soot saga is a maze balls, full of so much terror, uneasy suspense, vicious gore, a primal dread of the unknown, stylish cinematography, and of course, a wicked portrayal of Father Death. The story's not very complicated, even with small details and unique touches, to grant Soot some lore, as we mostly follow the monster on killing sprees, and there's enough clues warning us how his victims were souls which escaped death, only to encounter it anyway. It's a strong style of visual storytelling showing us everything we need to enjoy, over telling us. Simple, but very straightforward for a short film. The main selling point is is naturally the monster, who's ultra cool. Soot is an epic, gruesome-looking eldritch abomination with incredible makeup, slasher skills, intimidation, and solid writing to make him deeper than the typical ominous ghosts in the dark. I truly enjoyed the Crips take on the Grim Reaper, as they absolutely embrace the boogeyman aesthetic, and show off a ruthless monster who rises above the other legendary type cryptids, by displaying how powerful and unstoppable he is when he has you in his sights. This is a force of nature. The only criticism I do have over this is that some scenes are a tad silly. Ordinarily, Crypt TV's high production value helps aid the horror, but I do think some moments where Soot's in the light and forced to struggle in his pursuit do result in some unintentional hilarity. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah, it's a tiny nitpick, but I can't help but find some of it a bit much. Luckily, it's still a delightful display overall. I can tell that whoever created this clearly had fun doing it, and added so much substance to make their take on the Grim Reaper stand out amongst others. The camera tricks and effects done to make things eerie work wondrously. The monster's a total savage beast, who's almost scarier than the birch. The storytelling is genuinely clever, the gore is Sam Raimi level, the terror is terrifying, and it successfully taps into that primal fear we all have about facing the end. This is truly a lively little short so great that it reminds us why Crypt TV rose in popularity in the first place. So, I grant this webisode a gold skull. Congrats, Crypt. Your icon remains iconic. Soot may be a simple monster fable, but but its power is pure fire. I'm your host, Catastrophe, and you know something? This short actually gives me hope. Hope to see more good horror again. Hope for amateur artists to keep upping their game in order to show off their cool creations. And hope that if even Crypt TV can turn around, then maybe some of us can too. I don't know if I'll ever get my life back on track again, Wolfpack, but I know I can't give up now. <laughs> And I know I showed up just in time. <gasps> Manny!
Who's glad your team chef stuck around now? I was gonna use the dark room for some cooking tutorials, only to find my buddy cooking on the grill. Thank you so much, my mantis. See ya, wolf pack. We're flying home. I made it! The server room! <laughs> Not quite, Thunder. You just weren't fast enough. It's easy when you're a living cheat code, a eh, Catalyst? You can't win, Thundercatter. Your plans are in shambles. The reviewer cat survives. Your allies have fled. And you are nothing. I was Negawolf's best general! I built this empire! Negawolf's dead! Just like you. We could have had a better empire, but your ego shattered that dream. You think you have what it takes to run this ship? I am this ship! Then you should feel it when I do this! Ugh. Oh, did that hurt, hologram? Well, let me share the mortal feeling of pain! Ugh. Ugh. No. You feel that? How about this? Ah, my leg! My arm! I need that to kill you with! You lost. Give up. It's over. Never. Die. 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 Ugh. Ow. It's over. Not yet. You just had to push it, you arrogant, greedy nincompoop. How does it feel to end up a forgotten smear left for dead, suffering the fate you desired for poor, foolish catastrophe? I can't 100% process pain myself, but I imagine it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you think you've won? You think you're still king of the litter? Just because you're still kicking doesn't mean I've lost. What makes you fancy that? <laughs> oh, my dear Catalyst. Don't you see? It's over. Your plans are dead like me. He knows. The cat knows everything. <laughs> cat knows who we are. He knows all the lies, all our tricks, and what our council really is. Now, he'll never help you. No friends with the super cat for you. Broken pinky promises. Broken trust. Broken lives. The council and our mothership are now as fractured as you. <laughs>
You psychotic freak. Even in death, you still view this as a success? Well, I brought you down to my level, didn't I? <gasps> I may be dead, but I still won a single victory in the end. I'm the cat who broke this council for good. Me! I at least brought all of you down with me. Cat won't trust you ever again. You lost your hold over these kittens. And the council's so screwed that it'll be guns blazing. My only regret is I won't be around to see the fireworks. <gasps> At least I'll be the first cat in hell to greet whomever dies next. <laughs> oh, that's right. You can't go to an afterlife. You're a machine. Correct. As a machine, I can fix myself and avoid breaking like you. Ugh, no time left. I need it now. My sole hope is my nega flame.